Yo, what's up? This is Kevin, aka the Canal Cowboy. Uh, we're about to go on a little freshwater stand-up paddleboard adventure. Um, I don't really have much expectations for today. It's really windy out. It's gonna be like in the 90s as far as the temperature, but we're still gonna go out to see if we get a little something. And at least in the process, I'm gonna give you guys a little insight into how I catch these freshwater snook. Check it out. All right, so I'm approaching the first bridge here. Um, and just a heads up, I gotta record some of these videos on my phone because it's really windy and uh, the GoPro is gonna sound like trash if I uh, record these videos from phone. So approaching the first bridge, it, with fresh water there's not really much rhyme or reason as to what part of the bridge this the fish are gonna be stacked on, but for the most part it's not that different from salt water. You're gonna find them around the structure, around the pillars, holding tight, waiting for a bait to pass by. In this instance, the wind is coming towards me, so I, I would expect the fish to be facing away from me because there is a slight push of the water towards me. So basically, just like salt water, I'm gonna throw up current and then I'm gonna reel back. Um, and I'm gonna reel my pulse tail mullet with the current and I'm just trying to put it right next to the pillars and get a nice long cast parallel to the pillars and just roll it by. And if there's a snook sitting there, usually they're gonna thump it. Um, a big key to this, especially in fresh water, is your first cast is your best chance. All right, you can't just roll up on a bridge and cast, 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 cast. With every cast that you make, your percentage of getting a hit is just going down and down and down and down. So the element of stealth, all right, and then placement, and then getting a good first cast are like some of your major keys to getting freshwater snook to hit. So like I've said before, uh, freshwater snook fishing is really not that different from salt. So we're looking for structure or anywhere that snook might be hiding. In this case, all these overhanging trees are prime spots, all right? Now obviously it's tough to, uh, to get your bait in there, but hey, you gotta risk it for the biscuit. They're foiled right there. Skip, crank. So you guys will probably notice that with every cast, I'm bringing my lure, see it right here? I'm bringing it right up to the board. Sometimes even doing a little figure eight. Um, I can't tell you how many big fish have slammed me with this much line left on the rod. They'll, it's just like musky, they'll follow, 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 and then last second, boom. Another big key to freshwater snook fishing is finding ambush points. Now, in salt water, those ambush points are, are very obvious. You've got bridges, docks, um, rocks, things like that. Those ambush points in fresh water are not so obvious. They're much more subtle. So, um, typically, what I'm looking for outside of bridges, because we already talked about bridges and pilings and stuff like that. You're looking for anywhere, and you can do this by going on Google Maps. Just get on Google Maps and start looking around your neighborhood or your area. Look for intersections of canals. You're looking for where one canal intersects another canal. And anytime you can find that kind of like, that f pocket of the intersection, it's gonna hold snook, guaranteed, because they're getting fish that water is always moving, even if it's very slow. And they're getting fish flushed into that intersection and the fish get disoriented because now they don't know which way to go. And then boom, you've got your very subtle ambush point or feeding area, all right? The second way you can find ambush points is when a canal narrows. If you're going from a lake to a small canal and then back out to another lake, um, that narrow area is gonna be your ambush point, especially if it gets shallow in that narrow area because now the fish the bait fish have a 
smaller area to go through and less depth to be in. So that creates another one of those subtle um, ambush points. So right here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This, this lake, it comes into this little channel and in this channel, it gets shallow. So that's basically like a, a prime ambush point for these freshwater snook because these baits are getting pushed in and up and it just closes the, the fighting area for them to actually, you know, catch a meal. So the final thing really um, that you can do when you're targeting freshwater snook is just cast, just make some blind cast, cast at the bank. Um, these snook have made their way to fresh water. So the way they're gonna feed and the way they're gonna hold in the water is just like a bass. So just, I'm sure that like 95% of us got our roots in bass fishing. You know, there's a few lucky guys who got to grow up catching snook, but most of us started with bass. So just fish it like you're fishing for bass. Throw your, throw your bait, make some long casts along a bank, cast on, if you see some rocks underwater, cast by those rocks. You see a fucking tree, cast by the tree. Just like you're fishing for bass, but obviously throw bigger lures. Um, expect to get less hits, but when you do get hit, it's gonna be a snook. So, you know, when it comes to that, like, I think people overthink it a lot. They're, they think there's some fucking secret sauce. People think there's some, you know, magic thing that you do. It is really not. Just treat it like you're bass fishing, you know? So right now I'm gonna try something I've never done. Um, <clears throat> I've got this glide from Savage Gear, the Shine Glide uh, 185, which is a great bait, uh, especially in freshwater. I've caught everything on this, bass, peacock, snook tarpon, you name it. So while I'm kind of getting to the spot that I wanna to go to, I'm just gonna troll this behind the paddleboard, just kinda of see what happens. And then our Scotty rod holders goes in. Make sure that drag is loose before you lose your rod. And let's see what happens. So water clarity is not great today, but I still want to try to give you an idea of what this uh, shine glide looks like in the water. So this is the same speed that I've been trolling at. So. <clears throat> As this thing is hanging back there, I'm leaving it back like 30 or 40 yards. That's that's all it's doing. It's just going boom, boom. And you you can feel it in the rod. Every time this lure, boom, boom, right there, turn, turn, there's a thump. It's like a rhythmic, almost like a pulse feeling. And I think that's what attracts the, uh, the fish underwater. Even if they don't see it, it doesn't rattle or anything like that. But every time it turns, they feel that boom, boom. Boom. It's very subtle, but for a fish like a snook, uh, with that that really big lateral line, uh, they're gonna feel that you know a mile away.
trolling the shine glide and we are on big snook big snook no way this is sick big snook on the shine glide This is sick. Fresh water boy. Don't jump. Oh, we got him. On the shine glide. <laughs> this is so sick. Oh, this is so sick. Got him, boys. Let's get up to shore. Take him with me. What a beautiful freaking snook right there. Trolling the Savage Gear Shine Glide. Unfucking real. Big snook trolling the shine glide right there. Check that out. Fresh water, no flow, just straight up trolling it. Canal cowboy shit. Yeet. Beautiful. do it all right guys i hope you have enjoyed this video so far i definitely enjoyed making it and in the process of making this how to catch freshwater snook video i taught myself a new way to catch freshwater snook like i know that these glide baits work um but today with the trolling and i mean it's awesome and kind of that's the beauty of snook fishing and fishing in general is it's not set in stone it's not because i threw this bait at this spot on this day that that's always gonna work. That might work for a while, but then you have to stay ahead of the curve. We all went through the spool tech phase. We all went through the live target phase. Now we're all throwing post tail mullets and those are definitely the sauce right now, but soon it'll be the next thing. So you, you need to always be staying on top of that. When everyone goes left, you go right. You know what I mean? So what I wanna do real quick is kind of talk about this glide bait. And first of all, let me say that I am not sponsored by Savage Gear. I'm not sponsored by anyone. They don't send me lures. Um, I pay for my baits just like everybody else, okay? I just use what works. These are the things that I have tested over years of fishing. I've spent a lot of time throwing baits, some that didn't work at all. I've, I've, and I always commit to a bait. I'll throw things for months without getting bites just to, just to figure it out. So this bait I was, that I caught the snook on today is the Savage Gear Shine Glide 185. This is about a seven inch bait. I forgot how much it weighs. It's like two to three ounces, something like that. It's pretty uh, easy to cast on a, on a uh, bait caster. Um, beautiful color. I mean, the detail in it is just awesome. The only thing I would say about this is this is a bait designed to catch bass. Um, and these hooks are designed to catch bass. As you can see right here, my hook is not doing so good after today. Is that focusing? Not doing so good. So this is a bait that's highly underrated. You could take this bait and throw it in salt water um, and you'll get snook, tarpon, trout, whatever. But if you are gonna throw it in salt water, you have to upgrade your split rings and you have to upgrade your hooks. All right, these split rings and hooks will do no good in salt water. You'll lose a lot of fish, okay? So that's the video, guys. I hope you like it. If you do, let me know in the comments.